Hello there. Welcome to Joe Fanator's FTB Play Episode 29. Um, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to get right into the heart of it all here. Uh, you're going to see quite a few things right now that are actually not in the episode just yet. Um, this is kind of prior filming. Um, this is because I was going to do a big long thing on this railcraft part, um, but it's not actually working at the moment, so I don't want to kind of waste nine minutes of your guys' time showing you this railway when it doesn't work yet. So we're going to go right into the heart, and we're going to work on this tree farm over here. So I'll be right back, guys. So we're over here at this uh, tree farm, and uh, you can see it doesn't have any engines, and we want to re-automate this because I am running very low on wood. So what we're going to do is we're going to build these things called biogas engines. These things, when run on biomass, output 5 EU per tick, which is plenty. Trust me. So what we're going to have them do is basically one per machine here. And uh, we need a few more pistons, so I'm going to run upstairs, grab those, and come back. Alrighty, guys, you can see I got myself my two biogas engines. Grab those and run back downstairs. Okay, guys, we're outside, and you can see I've placed them down. But uh, you notice this sweet little GUI here, and you can tell it needs some sort of power up here. It needs to heat up or something. And it's got these two inventory slots, and it's only got one input slot. So what does that mean? Well, that means we need to put lava on one side to kind of warm it up, and we need some sort of fuel, which is going to be the biomass. So I'm going to run to the, to the nether here, and uh, for the first time in a long time, I'm going to fill up these cans I've got here. So I'll be back when I've got that done. Remember my old setup, so. You guys can clearly see I'm back in the nether here. Uh, it's been a long time, holy cow. Um, and you can see if I just right click on this tank, I can get a can's worth of lava out. So now that I've got my lava cans, I'm gonna take these back outside and uh, I'm gonna start those engines up. So I'll be back, guys. So as you guys can see, I'm down in the basement again and I'm just gonna put my cans right into this biomass tank and uh, the tank starts emptying itself into these biomass cans this is pretty much gonna f take all of it but um you know i need these for these engines because it only runs off biomass remember that it will not run off biofuel no matter how much you wish it would um, biofuel is only used i believe in the generator and um steam boilers so uh just remember that for when you build all these things otherwise this is a huge waste so we got ourselves these biomass cans, now we're going to run outside and uh, start up those engines. So I'm just going to place some lava in here, you see it fills itself up, and now I'm going to put half of the biomass in each. That should be plenty. And now when I flip this lever, you'll see they start heating up, sorry, <laughs> brain fart there. So they heat themselves up with this lava and then it starts pumping, and each of these is pumping 5 EU per tick, which is a whole a lot let's just put it that way so you can see it should start clearing out the sand pretty quickly here and uh, this will start also cutting down the trees which is quite good because it's been a long time since I've had any actual wood oh that went up to seven there holy so uh, yeah we've got this thing set up and this will be automated at some point um, maybe with some different setup or something but uh, for now this is probably good enough so I'm gonna run upstairs and we're gonna start on the next build Okay guys, and you can see I'm upstairs here, and I'm about to start on this next build, but first we need a bunch of steel, because we're going to be making ourselves a boiler, and it's the first time of me making one on my own. So what we need here is the blast furnace brick, because we've got to make a giant blast furnace. And it takes some soul sand, nether bricks, and magma cream. And magma cream is just slime balls and blaze powder, which is the reason I started making slime balls. So we're just going to take a few of them here, maybe five, make some magma creams. Alrighty, now we're going to go over this. And make ourselves, I believe it's like this. Let's see? Nope. <laughs> and then just like that. Gets us a bunch of blast furnace bricks. We might need a few more. Uh, maybe just like that. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Alrighty. Just like that. Bam. That should be plenty. <laughs> So we go downstairs, and you remember how I have this giant room here. Um, I didn't exactly leave enough room to build this thing, but I'm going to put it in here anyway. Because I figure, well, why not? Blast furnaces look awesome. And they're part of railcraft as well, so might as well. I think you need this middle space open. Just like that. Build it too high this time, so it's not the same height as these. So one more. And uh, then you cover it over the top. And it should turn itself into a blast furnace, just like it has. So blast furnace, um, when you put yourself some fuel in there, 
If you put iron in here, turn the iron into steel. So, I'm going to grab myself a stack or so of iron. Just like this. Where is it? There it is. Take our iron downstairs into the blast furnace and uh, just turn it straight into it. So you can see it starts working. I think this is a pretty long process. Um, so I will be back when I've got quite a bit of steel, guys. Alrighty, guys. You can see here I've uh, been busy uh, waiting for all that steel to cook up if we run downstairs. And yes, those are all diamond chests. And yes, they are all legitimately made. I've got myself quite a bit of steel here. Um, it took me almost all night to get the amount of steel I need. You can see I've got quite a bit in this canvas bag here. Steel, 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 iron. Um, and, uh, you know, I've done actually a lot more than this. So if we run downstairs real quick, you can see I've kind of organized this room pretty nicely, I think, anyway. Um, shrunk everything down, made it so it's a little bit more compact. I've added sub rooms and stuff, um, but the reason for that is because we're putting a huge amount of mod items right in this area here. So at some point um, in this or maybe next episode, we're going to put the boiler, a giant boiler, and a, uh, a turbine here. So uh, we're going to get into that. But first, I wanted to show you guys this. Look how much uh, biomass I've collected. Um, we're going to use a lot of that in the uh, upstairs room, but for now, it's pretty good. So uh, let us let me go back upstairs because you can see I've broken my minium stone and uh, I haven't been able to find shards since I've updated. So I'll go back upstairs and uh, use that crafting table. So one more thing just before I uh, get into the whole making of the, the boilers and whatnot. I just wanted to show you guys this in the rare items chest. Uh, my quarry has finally hit the diamond level so we're starting to get quite a few diamonds. Uh, we've got lots of these gems and stuff. And if you come over to this chest, you can see why I actually, this is the reason I actually started to upgrade, was this. Lots of ores, and I'm smelting them down as fast as they're coming in, so I mean, it's pretty much a frugal process. The ores chest is just about full, so it's kind of ridiculous. And the fuels, I don't even want to talk about the fuels chest. So, anyway, let's get back to the build. So first off, uh, to make the liquid field fireboxes, which is what we're going to need. Liquid... Fuel, <laughs> liquid field firebox. We need some steel plates, iron bars, fire charges, furnaces. Uh, we also need a bucket. I've got most of those items, but I don't have any fire charges. So we're going to quickly make a few of those here. Just a uh, few of them anyway. 36 should be plenty. I probably don't need that many. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to run downstairs and start up the, uh, the rail craft thingy, bobbery, jigger, whatever. Be right back. Alrighty guys, I'm back and I'm downstairs and uh, I've got the rolling machine started. Um, but first we need a whole ton of these steel plates. I'm going to make about as many as I can probably. Um, but for now that'll probably do. So I'm going to smelt a bunch of these down, make some steel plates and I'll come back to you guys. Alrighty guys, I'm back downstairs here and uh, just open this right up. And you can see I've got my steel plates here. So we're going to lay those down real quick with our iron bars. A fire charge, um, furnace, and a bucket. Now you're going to see I've got my first liquid fueled fire box. And I would do this all down here except for this is just a regular crafting table. So I'm going to quickly run upstairs and uh, start working on the, the actual project table. Alrighty guys, I'm not sure if this is going to be enough, but uh, hoping so anyway. So that gives us nine, which is the perfect amount. So we got ourselves nine liquid fueled fire boxes. And now to accompany this, we also need, um, I believe they're called boiler tanks. Maybe they're called tanks, I'm not sure. Um, steam. Who knows? Hang on. Bio. Come on. There it is. High pressure boilers. So we need to get some steel plates and put them one on top of the other. So just like this. Gets us three, four. We're gonna need a little bit more, a little bit more steel plating. So I'm gonna run back downstairs and make a little bit of that. I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, I'm back and I've just finished making the uh, the high pressure boilers. Pretty expensive, um, and I'm about to make a giant, and I mean giant, 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 giant um, railcraft boiler. So three by three of these liquid fueled fire boxes with three by three 
by three of these boiler things on top. It's pretty expensive, um, but totally worth it because apparently each of these out, each one of these outputs 20 EU per tick um, in steam or whatever it's called, maybe 20 total fuel. I don't know. But uh, you can see this mammoth of a machine, <laughs> absolutely huge. Um, takes up a lot of room, but about as, about as much room as this entire building here. But you can see when I open it up, it's a pretty sweet thing here. So by the looks of it, this is for the liquid fuel, this is the steam it outputs, and this is for the water. Now, the problem I'm going to have is I quite clearly don't have enough biofuel just yet. So we're going to have to build up a little bit of a stock of that first. So I think I'm going to wait until next episode to get into that. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go check the time of this episode. Um, and after that, I will come back. And if we have enough time, I'll start on the turbine. So I'll be right back, guys. Alrighty, guys, I am back. And we have quite a bit of time left on the clock here. So uh, before we go any further, I'm going to quickly make a few more items. Now, I've been having a bunch of my wooden doors ripped off by zombies and I'm quite sick of that. So as you can see here I'm just gonna make myself an iron door and one of these things called obsidian pressure plates. Now the obsidian pressure plate, if I were to place it down in the world, can only be activated by me, the player. So if you're in a PvP or an SMP or an SSP, only you or say one of your friends can activate this pressure plate. Creepers can't, cows can't, no mob other than you can. And then iron doors, they just can't be broken down by zombies. So I'm going to make a few more of those, and then I'm going to go run downstairs and place them in all the doors. And I'll be back right after that, guys. And then we're going to get onto the turbine. Alrighty, be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back downstairs here, and you can see I've got the steam turbine housing here. And you can see it takes a block of steel and steel plating, and it takes quite a few of them. So I'm going to make quite a bit of them, and I'll come back to you guys once that's done. But first, I'm going to make one on camera so you guys can see how it's done. So... Just get myself the steel block first. Pretty expensive, but you know, um, this is going to help me in the long run with generating a lot of EU. So get myself the four steel blocks and my four steel plates. Maybe it's in the opposite direction. Horrible with this stuff. Gets me the steam turbine housing. So I'm going to make a few more of those and I'll come back to you guys right after. Alrighty, be right back. Alrighty, guys, I'm back and I'm downstairs here. Um, you can see I've made 12 Steve, <laughs> Steve turbines, steam turbine housings, and uh, I've got quite a bit of fuel here. I've been waiting for quite a while. Um, we're going to can some of this up, and we're going to use it on our steam boiler here and see if we can get a bit of fuel, maybe a whole bunch of steam built up. You can see it can hold 1,152,000. Um, you can see I've also made it to four high. I think this is the maximum height it can go. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to attach the steam turbine housing right beside it. Now, we don't want to do this like before it started heating up because I'm not sure what the effects will be because this is my first time. So what we're going to actually do is just let it build up a bit of steam first, maybe like 500,000 or so. And then we'll build the steam turbine housing. So let's go check on the cans real quick and then we'll get this on the way, I guess. So uh, toss that in there and it should start heating itself up. Now, this thing, because it's high pressure and liquid fueled, um, it burns about eight times more fuel at the very starting process. You can see it how long it takes to warm itself up. And it's only gone one degree, and that was about a can's worth of uh, fuel. Now, when it's fully fully functioning and it's 100% efficient, it'll only burn one for about probably every five or six minutes or so. So uh, we're gonna let this cook up here, and once this gets to a, probably about halfway on its heat, I'll come back to you guys. Alrighty guys, you can see I'm back and it's only just started, this is my second stack of 64 here, only just started getting even into the visible area. I've got no steam yet, it's just heating up, so I'm getting the feeling this might take a little while longer than I had hoped. So, what I'm going to do is just skip ahead a step and start placing my steam turbine. Now I'm not sure what level this thing's supposed to be on, so uh, we're just going to kind of wing it and go for it. So I'm going to grab myself a bit more smooth stone. And then we're going to lay down a foundation with the smooth stone, just like this. All right, and then we're going to lay down the steam turbine right on the top here. Now, I'm not totally sure how this thing even works. I think you need like a special rotor for it. You can see it kind of makes itself into a thing. So yeah, it needs a rotor, and I think the rotor 
is a pretty expensive recipe. So this turbine rotor is three turbine discs, which is three tur or a bunch of turbine blades around a block of steel, and each of these is a steel ingot. So I need eight times three, right? Eight times three. So I need 24 of these blades times three is 72, I think. <laughs> 72 steel plus a block of steel for each, which is another nine. So is 27. Holy smokes, we need like <laughs> we need like 97, 98 pieces of steel. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna go upstairs and see if I have any leftover steel here. I'll be back, guys. All righty, guys. Let's start on making those things. So I'm gonna quickly make myself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one. <laughs> that's almost two there's two one two three four five six seven eight and I'm pretty sure these things actually wear out after time so that's kind of annoying now we need a block of steel for each of them and that should be plenty of all of it there's a guy around me somewhere here I don't know where holy this is expensive one two three and you combine them all just like this to get a turbine rotor holy don't want to have to do that too many times, I'll tell you that. So I'm going to put this in here like that. It doesn't take any damage because there's no steam. I think it needs steam to kind of spin this giant cog. And then this thing outputs... Oh, so that's kind of a gauge, I guess. This thing outputs its own EU. So I'm going to basically be able to apply this EU to the upstairs room. Um, we're going to get that in some point next episode. Um... This is <laughs> taking forever. I didn't think it would take this long. You guys can probably hear my cat, Gabby. Sorry if the mic was too close. Got a little bit more biofuel. You can see I've upgraded these ones to um, the biogas engines again. And I realized that if there's nothing in here, they don't stop piping. So I think we might have to accommodate for that next episode. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is going to go check how much time has passed uh, for this episode. And then I'll come back, guys. Alrighty, guys. Even if it is kind of a short episode or if it's a regular length episode, um, I think we're going to cut it here because what we're going to do next episode is pretty demanding. So, And I don't want to start at this episode, cut halfway through, and keep on going next episode. So we'll continue this, this build here next episode um, with connecting the EU. And we're also going to build ourselves a recycler um, and probably an MFSU. So come back next time for that. Um, and as always, guys, enjoy.